How's it going everybody? So I bought a couple of cassette tape players and recorders last week from Lazada. I'm gonna open them and try them out, see if they're any good. They're not just ordinary cassette recorders though. One of them was a USB cassette capture recorder, cassette tape to MP3 con converter. Basically this cassette recorder is supposed to be able to save it into a thumb drive like this. And this other one is supposed to be the almost the same thing except it's got a USB cable that links it directly to your computer. I bought both because they were both cheap. I got them on a Christmas sale. These are what the boxes look like. So they're essentially the same kind of item except the output varies. This one directly saves into thumb drive and this one saves it into your computer. So I'm gonna try out the one that directly connects to a thumb drive first before I try this out. There's kind of a slider. All right, it popped open. And then here, there's a slot for the battery. So you open it like this. Plugged in. Britney cassette tape here. I guess I aligned these pins with these holes over here. All right, so it's all settled in. I'm gonna close it. Just press the recording button and the device will start recording. I found it, this is the recording button. It's so tiny. It's like a dot with the pause sign. So I have to press it, it's gonna record to this. And then if I press it again, it's supposed to stop. When the green indicator light is on, it's supposed to be ready. Interestingly, using the auxiliary input, here. The manual says I can also record music from other sources with a 3.5 millimeter audio cable such as other sources like the radio, mini disc players, anything with an audio line out. So maybe a turntable. Oh and this auxiliary port here, it does double duty as a line in and out port because according to the manual, you could record from anything that has an audio out source. But this is also a line out port aside from being a line in port. You could apparently plug in speakers here or an earphone. Anyway, we're gonna try recording and then I'm gonna try to plug in speakers to see if it's actually playing my tape. This is the record button. Well, the green light is flashing. I don't think anything is happening. The tape is not moving. So, okay, I'm going to press play here. The tape looks to be moving. Now I'm gonna attempt to click record while well, the tape is moving. So on this side of the player, the green light is blinking. On this side, you can see the tape is moving. Oh, hey, how handy. It comes with earphones. So I'm gonna plug into this auxiliary port that supposedly does double duty as both an output and an input port. Then I'm gonna slide the volume up high. Britney's playing. Amazing. All right, now I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm gonna press this again. When I press this, the light stopped blinking, but the tape is still running. Now on to the next device. Okay, this is the second device, Super USB Cassette Capture. So on this side, the other device earlier, there's a USB on the go port on the outside to permit a thumb drive be plugged in. However, for this one, this side is very similar, but it doesn't have a USB on the go port. It does have a mini USB jack. Well, basically it comes with Audacity, which is already what I use for recording audio. Yep, it's an installation disc for Audacity, but I already have Audacity. That's what I use for audio when I make my videos. So interestingly, according to this manual, this green port here, similar to this, it also serves an auxiliary input, not just an output. So I can also plug in a mini disc player, and then I'll use a audio cable with 3.5 millimeters on both ends. So for example, I'm gonna plug this in here. It could also accept a radio or a turntable or basically anything that could output audio if you just have the proper cables. So now I'm gonna try to play this cassette 
Real big fish. See if it records to the computer successfully. I slide the switch here. There's a little tab here to open the battery slot. Plug it in, plug it in. This was a very good album. I have to align these holes here. Okay. So I'm gonna click play. So it's moving. So okay, this tape player, as a tape player, it does work. Now let's see if it works plugged into my computer. I'm gonna click stop. Pops out. So I've fired up Audacity in my laptop. The tape is moving. So I'm gonna plug in this side, the mini USB. I'm gonna plug it in here. All right, so it's plugged in. So I'm supposed to go to Preferences, Devices. It's not here. I'm gonna just restart Audacity. Edit, Preferences, Devices, Device. Now it's here. I shouldn't have opened Audacity before plugging this in because the input wasn't detected earlier. USB PNP audio. I'm gonna click that. And then the manual says in recording, I have to click software playthrough, listen while recording or monitoring new track. So the sound is now coming out of my computer speakers. Amazing. I don't know if the crackling is from the device or if my cassette is just really too old, but by the way, the volume that you output it at, that's how loud it's going to be recorded. So now I slid the volume down. As you can see, there's barely anything coming out there. But the louder I slide it, it's getting louder again there when you monitor it. So just keep that in mind. This is a purely analog solution. So it's not like you can lower the volume here, but then it's still going to be loud over there. What you hear here is what's coming into your computer. So just keep that in mind. All right, both of these worked. Obviously they have their own pros and cons. If you want to record this directly to your USB thumb drive, you could, but then you can't really monitor it while it's recording. Well, you could, but with headphones, but then you can't really see the up down of the, 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 the tracks, like the loudness and all that. With this one, you could directly record it to your computer and you could monitor it through Audacity or some fancier audio software like GarageBand or something. But in reality, you don't actually need this device and this to record stuff in your computer. If you have a working tape deck, you could directly record it into your computer via your computer's line in port if you still had a computer with a line in port. The thing is with a lot of laptops nowadays, it only comes with a single audio port. It works as a microphone in and a headphone out. And while the microphone in can serve double duty as a line in, I believe there's something off with the, like the sound or is it the volume? It's there's something off because it was meant for microphone or it's not stereo. I, I forget the thing. But if you do still have a computer with a working line in port, you don't need this. You don't need this cable. All you need is just a working cassette player, an audio cable like this both ends that run 3.5 millimeter, or maybe, I don't know, if your tape deck runs two RCA, then okay. Or one end that plugs into your tape deck, whatever shape it is. The other end, a single 3.5 millimeter jack, because most line imports in computer sound cards are like this, although there could be more exotic ones like optical or something else. But anyway, most of them, it's, it looks like this. So this one, you plug it into your computer. If you know what I'm talking about, then that's great. If you don't know what I'm talking about but are interested, although I think that's very unlikely in 2017, but if you are, I'm gonna take you on a very short trip down memory lane on how I used to do it back in the late 90s and early 2000s. If you're not interested in watching that, it's okay. You can stop the video right now. We have already accomplished our agenda for this video, which is just trying out these MP3 capture devices for cassettes, and they both work. 
But if you want to know how to directly record into your computer, if you don't want it to be in your thumb drive because you want to monitor or for any reason you want to directly record it to your computer, if your computer still has a working line in port, you can watch this. But if you're not interested, you can stop right now and I hope you enjoyed watching. I use to record cassettes from mp3s in my computer and record mp3s from cassettes. Recording cassettes from mp3s is similar to waiting for the song you like on the radio then rushing to click record in your tape recorder. I use the tape deck similar to this. I would connect an audio cable to the auxiliary in of the tape deck from the line out port of my computer, which is usually green. Usually your speaker cables are plugged into the line out port. Then I would click play on Winamp on my computer, the song will start to play and then I'd click record simultaneously and the tape deck would start recording the mp3 into cassette in real time, meaning I had to wait until the song ended to pause it. Sometimes I would leave the tape deck since the tape would just record the next song in my Winamp mp3 playlist anyway, at least until one side is full. I could not rely on auto reverse to flip the tape for recording to side B though, so I just had to return before one side is full. When the mp3 is paused for a split second between tracks, the cassette is recorded accordingly with a gap between tracks. Some of the fancier tape decks I've used, one was in a car, can detect that gap between tracks. And if you long press and fast forward, instead of skipping through the song, then you pausing when it seems like the appropriate amount of time has passed and you've reached the next song, it whizzes through the song and skips right to the next track. I would also record songs the other way. Earlier I talked of recording songs from my computer into cassette. I would also record songs occasionally from cassette into the computer. I did that more rarely though, only when I had some songs in cassette that I found hard to download online, whether I could not find it or my dial-up internet was too slow. I would play the song on my tape deck or in a portable tape player like this. It still works. You can hear my Naughty by Nature tape playing. This device also doubles as a sound recorder, that's why it has built-in speakers. Most portable tape players do not. The sound recorder only records from its built-in microphone though. It is no auxiliary input. So if I wanted to record a song onto a cassette from my computer, I still have to use my normal tape deck with the auxiliary input as I described above. So I would connect a cable with 3.5mm heads on both ends, one end to the headphone jack of the tape player, then the other end to the line in port of the computer, usually the line in port is colored blue. Then I'd open a sound recording program and it would detect any sound entering the computer from the line in port and record it. There is fancier software that can detect gaps between tracks and split the recorded sounds into separate mp3. But I rarely record whole albums this way, usually just one or two songs, so a basic sound recorder was fine for me. There are two tabs in the top left and top right of cassette tapes. If you break off the tab, it prevents the cassette from being recorded over in tape recorders. Once I've finalized the mixtape, I would break off the tab since I'm so forgetful, I don't want to accidentally tape over my mixtape. These are what the tabs look like when they're not yet broken. These are tabs from a commercially bought cassette tape album. Back in the day, I had this mini disc recorder player. So this mini disc recorder actually could record from different sources. 
it has a line in port and it could record from different sources like this one it re could record from a turntable or radio or whatever source that could output its music into this this does not have a microphone though so this is not like those things where you talk into it for reporters it does have a microphone in port so you could plug in a lav mic or something i had a bunch of mini discs like this and i would record them here similar to how you record cassette tapes just because this is a superior format to cassettes I don't talk about superiority in terms of audio quality the way audiophiles keep arguing oh records vinyl is better than this because of that but then cds yada 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 i don't talk about superiority like that for me superiority is convenience and hardiness of the media this one is not very hardy it's kind of fragile actually i've had tapes where the tape inside just get got caught in a loop and then it's just ruined or CDs are scratchable, so I have to be very, very careful with them. With this one, it's optical media, so there's a CD inside, but it's kind of encased in this plastic, kind of like a diskette. I don't know if anyone's familiar with, with diskettes nowadays. My definition for superiority is convenience and hardiness. It's not going to get ruined. So I had this, and then I would put this in and record. I can no longer open this because the tab thing is broken, but... This came out the year the first iPod came out, the iPod Classic with the click wheel. I stupidly chose this over the iPod Classic. The iPod Classic turned into the iPod and the iPhone, blah, 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 and we know. And then Sony, it kind of got lost in the race to digital music, and we know the rest of history. So I backed the wrong horse, in other words. If, any, if anyone's interested, you can leave me a comment. I can make a video about mini discs, but it's kind of like a dead medium nowadays. Sorry, I forgot to introduce the books I wanted to talk about. This one is a very cool book. It's called Mixtape, The Art of Cassette Culture. It's edited by Thurston Moore, the man from Sonic Youth. It's a very cool book. It has all this pictures and essays about cassette culture, as the title says. And this other book, it's more on boomboxes. I just thought about it because we got these tape players. And this book is called The Boombox Project. The Machines, the Music, and the Urban Underground. It's by a guy called Lyle Urko with a foreword by Spike Lee. So if you open it, you can see... David Byrne. Okay, no, I don't know why it opened to David Byrne, but you can see all these classic boom boxes. It's got essays, interviews, just pictures of different boom boxes, people using the boom boxes, the stories behind the boom boxes. If you love analog media, if you love music history, you love this book. If you don't love these things, then what are you watching? Uh, video on cassette recorders for in 2017 right ah you know this is such a cool so yeah you can just buy it because i'm not gonna stand here and flip the whole book for you but i just wanted to recommend these two books all right thank you for watching everybody i hope you found it informative and merry christmas if i don't finish editing this in time for christmas then happy new year happy holidays Thank you again. See you next video. If you like this video, please consider thumbing it up and subscribing to get updates on when I upload again.